Well, hurricanes are a force to be reckoned with, and we learned all too well in September about the power of surge. Welcome back. I'm Lois Tomey in for Russ McCaskey. And I'm Nicole Gabe. Now, a team of researchers are working on a new technology to better understand the phenomenon. Wink News reporter Liz Byro has the story. The rush of water. And there was, you know, a river going down the street. Just watched it rise to six foot of water. The push from the wind. There it goes. It's going to take out the, uh, oh, no. the can be a deadly combination, as we all know now. Statistically, storm surge is the greatest killer, and that was the case with Ian. We had Lee County have the greatest death toll, and that was because of storm surge, that water level rise of upwards of 15 feet. Storm surge's potential to take lives, damage property, and our coastal ecosystems is why studying and understanding it is so important. Thanks to technology and data mapping, we can do that. So the main purpose of our sensors is to record the height of the storm surge and the duration throughout the storm. Don Hampton is a hydrologic technician with the U.S. Geological Survey. He, along with 50 members, deployed more than 400 water level sensors just days before Hurricane Ian roared ashore. We'll attach this little bracket on a bridge piling or dock piling, something we expect to survive the storm. And we'll attach our little sensor in there. And then once that's in there, we'll slide this over to protect it. And then we'll let it go and we'll come back after the storm to recover. At 6.39 p.m. on that unforgettable Wednesday, this sensor attached to the Fort Myers Beach Pier recorded a 13.23 foot surge. It was the highest water level recorded by these sensors, but not the highest recorded by USGS. Two miles down the road and two weeks after Ian, teams measured this water line, 13.8 feet above ground. If you go back 200 years, there has never been a storm surge to that caliber in southwest Florida. Those tide sensors from the USGS, especially after Ian, when I went through the data, was so incredibly important because it shows that with a hurricane, every single mile makes all the difference. So for example, those USGS tide sensors and the levels were showing about three feet for Boca Grande. But in the case of Sanibel, they were in that worst part of the storm, just 20 miles south of the Boca Grande sensors, they hit about 13 feet. A 10 foot difference in just 20 miles from Boca Grande to Sanibel. Every mile makes a difference. It just pinpoints why we need to collect this data in order to improve these models and help the public prepare the public for future events. I asked Matt how he'll use the data. I think it improves forecasting in general because with looking at that data, we can analyze what Ian did because of its size, because of its slow speed, and we can see the distribution of how low the tide levels got or how high they got. Engineers will also use the information to design structures to withstand storm surge and floods. And emergency managers may use what we learned from Ian to change Florida's building codes. Hurricane Ian is among the most powerful storms to ever hit the U.S. 150 mile per hour winds, 2.6 million people without power, 12.6 billion in insured losses. But with these sensors, USGS says we should be more prepared for future storms. Liz Byro, Wink News. Well, the U.S. Geological Society shares its data with state, local, and government agencies such as FEMA to help in the recovery process after a hurricane or a tropical storm.